I'm John Carter in Moscow, in Havana, Cuba. Now in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. I'm John Carter in Petra, right here in communist China, reporting from India. Hi, I'm John Carter in the Solomon Islands. I'm John Carter in Soweto, from El Salvador. I'm John Carter in Sydney, Australia. John Carter explores what is behind the new health revolution. Hello, friend. I'm John Carter. Welcome today to the new health revolution. The Bible teaches very plainly that we are not saved by what we eat or what we drink. We are saved by the grace of God. But God wants us to be happy and healthy. The Bible teaches this. God is a God of grace and mercy, and he wants us to be healthy and strong. Today we have a very special guest. Dr. John Westerdahl is a health scientist. He's a graduate of Loma Linda University, and we have tremendous material to share with you today. Welcome today to the Carter Report. Greater Manila is more than 20 million souls. Almost all these beautiful people are ignorant of the true gospel of Christ. Manila needs Jesus. 35 years ago, John Carter came to Manila. Pastor Carter is returning to Manila with an urgent assignment. Preach the gospel of Christ and the great truths of the Bible. Don't water down the message. Make it plain, make it clear, make it Christ-centered. The Carter Report needs your help now to light a fire in the Philippines. Your gift will help open the doors of bondage, smash the chains of sin, and open the gates of paradise to thousands of lost souls. The churches have sent out an urgent plea for the Carter Report to return. Help us proclaim the true gospel of Christ to the beautiful Filipino people. Please send your support to the address on the screen, visit our website, or call the Carter Report. Welcome to the New Health Revolution. I'm John Carter. I want to read you a text out of the, out of the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, Paul says, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? You belong to God. We believe that God has given us some marvelous truths in his word because he loves us and he wants us to be healthy, happy and successful. We are delighted today to have with us a famous health scientist, Dr. John Westerdahl, a graduate of Loma Linda University School of Public Health. Dr. John Welcome today to the Carter Report. Great to be with you today, Pastor Carter. We're delighted to have you with us because we're going to have a great time together. It appears that the health crisis in America was made worse, some think, by a recent report that says eating red meats and processed meats is actually good for you. <laughs> right, right. That, that's caused a lot of, of issues today. It, it was on Fox News. Yes, it's been on all over the media. And a commentator on Fox News said, eat up now, eat up the red <laughs> meats because you're going to live longer and you're going to look better and all the rest of it. Now tell us, what scientific evidence exists to show that eating red meats and processed meats is actually bad for the system. Oh, there, there's been years, decades of research in the scientific studies and epidemiologic studies and clinical trials and so forth, showing that uh, consuming more red meat and particularly the processed meats, where they have all these chemicals added to it, mm -hmm. and they, they put everything in processed meats. Um, everything in... Every part of the animal. You don't even want uh, to know. Go and the there. scrapings off the floor. That, that's true. The hide, all the waste products are ground <laughs> up and they're put together and they put it into these processed meats. 
And uh, so this has caused a great concern in the public health com uh, com uh, community because because yes, yes. uh, it's it's like you know people like to hear good news about bad habits. Yes, of course and, they do. And uh, what's happening is the meat industry and the scientists that are affiliated with it. Uh, they're running scared right now because more and more research is showing that this re these red meat consumption, particularly high consumptions of that, and also the processed meats, increases your risk of heart disease, increases your risk of t different types of cancer. The, even the United Nations has come out strong on this, and this is a problem. But what's happening right now is we're coming up to the new dietary guidelines for Americans, and this same thing happened years ago. They come out... Saturated fats aren't that bad. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. when when the government's about to make some new uh, dietary guidelines. For is Americans. it true? Is there a parallel between the meat industry today and the tobacco industry of say 1950 and 1960? Well, you know, this is very interesting because they had scientists in, the, in on the tobacco industry side that would say on uh, the payroll, on the payroll, <laughs> and. and uh, <laughs> and, you know, the Surgeon General at that time, who was really great, he was uh, very strong against smoking and so forth, but they would swear in testimony in Congress yeah, that there's Stand no it. evidence to show. Raise a hand and that swear. They raised. Yeah, what I'm telling you is God's truth. Yeah. And they were being paid by the tobacco companies. Well, the Surgeon General even made a joke <laughs> about it. They're raising their hand on one side and they're crossing their fingers behind them. So... <laughs> so uh, It's the scoundrels, weren't they? It was. And yeah, I know. You know, this is out outrageous. Millions of people dying. And as a scientist, there are, I know for a fact, there are other scientists that do represent food industry. Some of them are very good scientists. However, there's a bias there. And now they're seeing all these, even these hamburger places are having plant-based burgers. and Seeing and go more, to McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, they're have, you know, they're all seeing that. That's losing sales. Yeah. So there is a concern. So what they said in this report, which is ridiculous. I mean, every, if Harvard University, Columbia University, all the t top scientists in the country. And I'm a member of the True Health Initiative, which is a group of 500 scientists. I'm on their council, along mm. with other scientists from Harvard and others, yes. who said this report is going to cause a lot of confusion. It's wrong. They've re seen the data. Cause a lot of cancer. That's right. A lot of heart disease. It will. A lot of a lot of funerals. Right. Now let, let me ask you this. Here we've got Fox, and most of us on occasions look at Fox. Sure. And they're trumpeting this report. Uh, one of their prominent uh, speakers, commentators, is saying, "I can hardly wait." You know, uh, eat <laughs> up, folks. This is. It, you know, we've got, we've got license now. It, it, it's like uh, that movie, License to Kill. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, you know, in this, in this uh, report, the, one of the scientists who was behind putting this study out, years ago, he also uh, was working with the uh, sugar industry, saying that, you know, uh, sugar is not all that no, bad. No, sugar is good for you. Yeah. It, it, it's, they say, you know, it's not that bad that people are saying. So, it, uh, do, do you think this report that was trumpeted around the world, yes. uh, led by Fox, uh, do you think some of these people were unduly influenced by the meat industry? There's no question. Are you they sure? Were. I'm, I'm sure because they've had a history in the past of working with, and they, they've been a part of an organization that actually is a group of scientists in this organization that uh, represent but, uh, the food uh, product industry. But, but, the, but the media is absolutely honest. We all know this. Yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, but these make headlines. Yeah. And, it, and unfortunately... It, it makes head headlines and it makes money. It makes money for them and it, 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 it gets the people confused. Mm -hmm. Oh, scientists don't agree. Well, we can eat whatever you want to. Um, but the, the overwhelming evidence is showing that we have to not, they're, they're saying keep the meat at the same level. Don't try to cut down. That yeah. makes no sense because yeah. most people are eating too much. Yeah. yeah. So that's what's going on. Now, um, to go a slightly different direction, I understand that there are people in Sardinia, Italy, and yes. they're some of the, the healthiest people on the planet. I think, th yes. are they in the blue zone? Yes, they're one of the blue zones. So we've that, got people in Sardinia, they're in the blue zone, they live longer than most of the rest of us, and they eat meat. 
Yes, they eat some meat, uh, but generally, according to the scientists at National Geographic that study, it's about once a week they have some once meat. Once a week? About once a week on the mm. average they have some meat. And uh, they have some, also some cheese that uh, it, from animals that eat a lot of these omega-3 yeah, fatty yeah, yeah, acids yeah, yeah. that may be higher. The other thing about the sardines... And, and not full of hormones. And not through all the hormones also. Yeah, the growth hormones. Yes. And, and the drugs that are pumped into the animals. Right. And the scientists believe there's a... a in, in the case of the sardinias... Uh, people that there may be a real strong genetic factor because they have a fair amount of uh, centenarians in Sardinia. How do you get and, this genetic factor? Is it too late for me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, 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 look, let's pardon my being um, a little jovial, but sure. at this stage in my life, I'm looking for everything to help me. The Sardinians eat a bit of meat once a week. They eat cheese. Okay. What, what else do they eat? Well, the thing is, most of what they eat, the, the large quantity of the, what they eat is coming from their vegetable garden. So they have vegetable gardens? So they have vegetable gardens. Some of the foods that they're eating, they have a high-protein uh, flatbread that they make from wheat. Ah, they, they, sounds uh, good. Like tomatoes, a almonds, barley, fava mm -hmm. beans, chickpeas. These uh, make up the bulk of their diet. And what about uh, leafy greens? And a lot of leafy greens also. Is so, this the Mediterranean diet? Right, because they're in Italy, so they're eating more of the Mediterranean-style uh, diet. And if they're using any oils, it's that organic extra virgin And are they oil. couch potatoes? No. Do they sit in front of the television set like most of us no. in the Western world with their eyes glued to the television set, most uh, stuffing ourselves with uh, junk food? No, they don't. Most of the men there are actually shepherds, and they're out with the oh. sheep all day long. They're doing some physical work. And you know what? There's another factor in there that they feel that mm. that type of lifestyle, thank you if you were a shepherd out yes. with the sheep, yeah. just spending your day walking around, working with the sheep, that's a very low-stress type of job. Mm. And they think that uh, that low-stress lifestyle... It's too late is, for me, isn't it, to become a shepherd? In Sardinia. <laughs> well, we're shepherds. You're a, a uh, minister, yeah. right? That's and, a shepherd. And, and that's not uh, uh, a stress-free job, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but that type of lifestyle, uh, also, when you have a low-stress lifestyle like they are doing, that reduces the risk of cardiovascular disease. But also disease. exercise. Exercise uh, in combination with the low stress, right? Have you heard of James Harriet? No, I haven't. James Harriet wrote the book, I'm trying to think of it, All Things... Bright and beautiful. Okay. Uh, he's a vet. He was a vet up in the northern parts of England. And uh, I read the story, all things bright and beautiful, how he'd be called out at two in the morning, three o'clock in the morning to deliver a cow or something, you know. Uh, but yeah. these folks ate a lot of unhealthy food, but they walked 20 miles a day. Exercise is a big factor Up in and down, health, right. 20, and uh, they, they didn't walk it, they chased their animals right. 20 miles a day. But we today have a, a very different lifestyle, don't we? We're very sedentary. Uh, we don't get enough exercise. That's why it's a good idea, even if you're in a sedentary job, hmm. every hour get up and walk around a little bit and then sit down again. And say that again. I want my staff to hear this. Every hour. I tell get, them this. Get up. and Because studies show, you. let's say someone does a, a lot of exercise in the morning at the gym, yeah. and yeah. the rest of the day they're sitting around. Uh -huh. Well, they got some benefits then, but they, they're losing the benefits if they're sitting in a sedentary lifestyle and, and job. You need to get up every hour and just take a little walk around the office to, to get up because if you're sitting solid, that's increasing your risk of heart disease. Uh, when we finish this interview, you and I are going to get up. Now, <laughs> we've referred, when we're talking about the people in uh, um, Sardonia, where was it? Um, Sardinia? Yeah, Italy. yeah. When we're talking about those folks, they're having the Mediterranean diet. They belong to a, a so-called blue zone. right. Tell me about these blue zones. Well, the scientists and, and explorers in National Geographic, particularly Dan Buettner, who is the, what they call the explorer of longevity, they had this world map on the on, posted up, and what they did is they were trying to identify these cultures of longevity where mm. people in the world live exceptionally healthy and longer life. Well, what mm. they did, they had this blue marking pen. Yeah. They circled this one, and they circled this one. They had three identified ones. 
and at that time for National Geographic. And there's blue marking that says, oh, let's call these blue zones. That's how it yeah. came about. But these are cultures of the world where they live longer and healthier lives. Are there some identifying factors that make these places very special? Yes, there's a number of factors that, and here, here's some of the blue yeah, zones. They, they've identified- Sardinia there. Yes. Yeah, and they've, identif Japan. they've identified five altogether. Yeah. Ikari Ikaria, Greece, and Okinawa, and also Nicoya, yeah. Costa Rica, and Loma Linda, California. Which is not far from here. Right. And it's a smoggy place. It's a smoggy place, which shows that you can still live in an a, a urban area yeah, and live a long, healthy life. But these are the identifying factors. It's, it's quite amazing, isn't no, it? No smoking. Mm -hmm. They had an importance of family. They got regular exercise, social engagement. Spirituality and religion played an important role. And they that believed, gives you peace. And that helps give you peace and controlling uh -huh. your stress. Hmm. Moderate caloric intake and a, more of a plant-based type of diet. Not all of them were vegetarians like the Sardinia, but they hmm. were semi plant-based, you know, they eat meat just uh, uh, maybe once a week is when they had their meat. And now this is, this and is vegetarian. This, this is science, isn't it? This is all based on science uh, and the research. This is not religious fanaticism. No. Uh, now, I want to say to the camera, I want to say to my friends who are watching, we're not saved by what we eat or what we drink or what we don't eat or what we don't drink. We are saved by the grace of God. We're saved by the blood of Jesus. In this ministry, we believe in the gospel of Christ. And so we're not saved by being vegetarians. But listen, doctor, Jesus said in John chapter 10, I believe I've come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Right. Comment and, on and it, please. Well, that's true. And the Lord wants us to be healthy. As Christians, we should be the healthiest of, of, of everyone because yeah, yeah, we so, need to get out and spread that gospel that Jesus has called us to do. So it, it, it's not really good news if you're having a diet that's going to give you cancer or heart disease. No. And you know what? That affects, that affects your spirituality. If you're sick, yes. it's hard to praise the Lord. It's hard to concentrate on, on the mm -hmm. scriptures. Uh, uh, but when you're healthy and vibrant, you can live life, as Jesus says, more abundantly. Now, i, I got to make this statement. Okay. Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, through whose grace we are saved, right. ate fish. Yeah. He ate, you know, Jesus ate the Mediterranean diet. Now, I'm talking about not today's yeah. Mediterranean diet. Uh -huh. I'm talking about the ancient Mediterranean diet during the Bible times. And that was predominantly a plant-based diet, lots yes. of fruits and vegetables and plant foods, and they had some fish as well, too. Uh, now, are there not benefits in eating wild Alaskan salmon? Well, the wild Alaska salmon, now we're talking about wild, not yeah, well, farmed. Not, not farmed as poison. Because problems. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are, it is a source of what we call omega-3 fatty acids. These are uh, essential fats that we don't get enough of in mm. our diet. Now, of course, the salmon are getting it from algae. They're actually getting it from plant sources and it's yes. concentrated yeah. in their flesh. And also, if someone doesn't eat fish, they can get it from flax seeds, from chia seeds, yes. from walnuts. Yeah. Those are also good uh, plant sources of omega-3 fatty acids. But, but, but uh, the farm yes, raised fish, it's, it's bad stuff, isn't well, it? Well, here we go again. This, yeah. is, this is big agriculture business, right? Yes, it is. And on, Money. On, on land, they do farming of the cows and, and so yeah. forth. And they feed them improperly and they're not healthy. Uh, and the same thing's going on. So they're maximizing the production to make more of these salmon. Uh, they say you can hardly walk between the fish. Yeah. I mean, you oh, just they're all, they're walk all on their cram backs. crammed together, and they use chemicals in those waters yeah. to make sure that they don't get diseases. And often they feed them uh, awful and everything. I mean, right? It's not a hell. It's not, let's no. put it this way: if they're out wild, eating the way they're supposed to eat, they'd yeah. be much healthier. But they're 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 sickly. That some of these fish are sickly, and they, they're crammed in an environment. I but, was, but from I, a business standpoint, it's maximizing production, right? Now, I, I'm not absolutely uh, certain where I read this. It could have been Newsweek, or Time magazine, mm -hmm. but it said if a woman is pregnant, she shouldn't have more than four ounces of farm-raised fish a month, right? Because because it's so bad for the baby. Yeah. Poisonous stuff. Well, what it is, we're concerned about, you know, the ocean is one big soup. 
and there's yeah. pollutants going there. Now, Jacques Cousteau, mm -hmm. and I, I am a good friend of his, fr his son, Jean-Michel Cousteau. Oh, yes. Jacques Cousteau, back in the 70s, in his expeditions, would go up into Arctic regions and other places of the world where man has never been. Yeah. They take the fish out, they tested it, they found it had significant levels of DDT and pesticide residue. Yeah. So, it's not uh, good, is it? So that is a concern in the oceans today. But the smaller the fish, the less of the uh, chemicals. Yeah, because the true? bigger fish eat the smaller fish and it uh -huh. concentrates up to the food. So the bigger fish really are quite toxic in many cases yeah, because so, they're concentrated. Uh, so if you're going to eat poison. fish, you better eat, what, sardines or something like that. A smaller there'll fish. Be, there'll be less uh, contamination. Less contamination. Yeah. Okay. Now, let me say this to you, doctor, because you're... You're a world authority on this. Many people, and some of these people I know, pride themselves on being vegetarians. Right. Uh, and some of them doubly pride themselves on being vegans. I'm a vegan myself. Uh -huh. Well, I'm not talking about you, but I'm, I do know, and you know some people who yeah. are big into being vegetarians and they fill themselves up with sugar. Right. Have you ever been to some of their oh, church I, listen, socials? I know. I mean, it, it's it's almost murder. <laughs> I mean, the people are well, stuffing down their well, throats lots of sugar. There's healthy vegetarian diets and mm -hmm. then there's unhealthy vegetarian diets. And if you're a vegetarian, you're eating lots of saturated fat and cheese and egg yolks and so forth. You're gonna. It's that's not a healthy thing. And all that sugar, refined, how empty bad calories, is refined sugar? How bad is it? It's bad. Uh, it, it, how it, bad? It's uh, very bad because it's completely concentrated. What we call empty calories. There's mm -hmm. no nutrients in it at all. It's uh, very high in sugar. This affects your brain, the way you think. It uh, increases your blood sugar. It's uh, doing severe damage. And we eat about, the average American eats 120 pounds of sugar a, a year. Uh, 120 pounds. Listen to this, my friend. Sorry to be the bearer of such <laughs> awful news. The average, uh, average American eats how many pounds a year? 120 pounds of sugar 120 year. pounds of sugar. Does this influence the way we think? There's no question. Because what happens is, uh, first of all, when you eat that much amount of sugar, you know, your blood sugar goes real up, yeah, you get a yeah. lot of energy, yeah. but then it drops, and then you, you feel in, like in a stupor, you don't feel, yeah, you don't and, have the energy. And, and this influences the, the processes of the mind. That's right. And so people find it very, very difficult to think rationally and clearly. Is this true? That's true. And it goes the same with all that extra fat people are eating, too. It's, it, 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 it slows, it, it inhibits the cerebral circulation, blood circulation to your brain. So there's a relationship between what we eat and how we think. There is. And so fuzzy thinking may be caused by fuzzy eating. That's correct. <laughs> That's correct. Uh, America today, we know uh, in America today, we have a crisis wherever you look. Maybe one of the reasons we have this crisis is because of the junk that we are putting into the temple of God. You know, most people treat their bodies, which is the temple of God, yeah. as a trash can with a hairy lid. In other words, they just throw everything a in that. A trash can with a hairy with lid. A trash can with a hairy lid. Disgusting. And uh, if we're a living temple, we mm -hmm. want to put the best things in it for God. What health. about corn syrup? Corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a problem. That's in you know, it's one of the cheapest forms of sugar in the diet. Mm -hmm. And so, what's happened is the government has given these big subsidies to yeah. the, the corn growers, mm. and they make the corn syrup so it's cheaper than cane sugar. Mm -hmm. And they put it in some, from soft drinks to all these jams and jellies uh -huh. to all the things that have corn sweets syrup, in it. high fructose corn syrup. It's very inexpensive form of sugar that people uh, they manufacture. And and we grow this because we have prodigious, uh, generous. Farm subsidies. That's right. That's why it's so cheap. And because of these subsidies, we're not going to get into this, but there are some parts of the world where uh, people are committing suicide because they can't compete. Right. And we're putting out these corn syrups that are poisoning the population so the population cannot think reasonably and rationally. And it's all political, getting these subsidies politics. to the politics. You don't see uh, subsidies on broccoli, do you? 
<laughs> cauliflower. I mean, I don't see any substance. And on that. not since President <laughs> Bush was the president, you know? He, yeah, that's right. You know? He didn't like broccoli. Okay. Now, what does the Bible say, if anything, about eating and drinking? What, what about the original diet? We, you know, we believe we're saved by grace alone, yeah. through faith alone, but we believe that this book tells us how to be happy and healthy and prosperous. What does it say well, about the original diet? Well, you know, the Garden of Eden is where the, the op optimal diet gave, God gave man. Hmm. And that was in Genesis 129, uh, and it, which is an all-plant-based diet. There was no eating of meat and so forth, but it was all plant foods. And that's, uh, God intended us to eat that way. That was the optimal type of diet. So man was given this diet to live for eternity, basically, wasn't exactly. he? Exactly. Man, mm -hmm. originally in the Garden of Eden, was designed to live forever, but he was given a choice. Like we're given choices with our diet and, and lifestyle. And, and so it appears, if we can get back to this diet, we're going to be healthier, happier, more prosperous, and we're going to enjoy longer lives like the Hunzas and other people. That's right. And what's interesting to point out, the scripture indicates too, that we're going back to this type of diet in God's new kingdom in heaven. The gospel, the Bible says in Romans 14, 17, is not about eating and drinking, but it's about joy and peace and happiness and holiness in the Holy Spirit. Having said this, yes. the body is the temple of God. Right. Jesus came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Right. As we finish this segment of this program on the new health revolution, what would you say to the audience so that they can be happier and healthier, live longer? Well, I think, of course, as you point out, having a relationship with Jesus Christ is, is the key to enjoying really optimal health. And combine that with a healthier lifestyle, you have the best going for you in all ways. Um, doctor, it's been our privilege and we're going to have you back in, in, in our next segment. Okay. And we're going to talk about the new health revolution. We're going to talk about the super, super, super foods. Right. We're so glad that you joined us today. Don't go away because we'll be back soon as we talk about the new health revolution. Stay with us and thank you, Dr. Westerdahl. Thank you. God has got a time and a place for everything. Nothing happens by chance. In spite of the powers of darkness, nothing can destroy the church of God. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That the gospel is not about you and me. It is the good news about the Lord Jesus Christ. What and where is heaven? This DVD series from John Carter will be yours with a gift of $50 US or $70 Australian. Write to us at the address on the screen. Visit carterreport.org, your home for inspirational teaching. For a copy of today's program, please contact us at P.O. Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. Or in Australia, contact us at P.O. Box 861, Terrigal, New South Wales, 2260. This program is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. We thank you for your continued support. May God richly bless you.